much. Good evening to all of you. Thank you for the very warm welcome from this very massive crowd. So I want you to give yourselves a tremendous round of applause. Um, as as uh, the chairman would have told you and other speakers, there are more people outside the schoolroom than inside the schoolroom. So thank you, thank you, thank you here in Konaripo. Thanks to all of you in the constituency of Komoto Manzan. And of course, to my colleagues on the platform, to you, my friends, family, all of us members of the House of the Rising Sun. I am very, very happy to meet with you. As you know, we're engaged in these meet the constituents. We've been going from constituency to constituency. And I'm coming all the way down from Separia. So it was a very long drive, but I'm telling you, it was well worth it to see so many of you here tonight. It was well worth it. <laughs> Dr. Griffith, our chairman, thank you for sharing these proceedings. I listened to you, I listened to every speaker, because that's how long I've been driving. When this meeting started, I was on my way already in the car coming. And I want again to thank you, thank you for the contributions you made tonight, for the support and dedication you have demonstrated in every way, and to all the organizers who have put this massive meeting together. And you would have been following, I know, um, throughout every Monday when we visit the constituencies, everywhere we go, each meeting, the crowd is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> And unlike some of the detractors and the doubting Thomases who say, you know, we are busting in crowds and we are bringing people from all over, this year, the majority is a homegrown crowd. I can see that. It's a homegrown crowd. So Harry Pautap, deputy whip in the parliament, and you really cracking the whip, Harry. Well done, and thank you. We have put our confidence in Harry to lead the bench as our deputy whip and I'm very proud and pleased of the job as, that he's doing. And of course, Mr. Warner, I'm sure he's still listening on his radio, tuned in as he's making his way to the airport. As our chief whip, I have every confidence that he can do the job. And when he's not there, Harry is there to help us. And of course, both of them as whip and deputy whip, they have the rest of us on the bench. I'm sitting right next to them in the parliament every Friday or whenever. We are there to give them that support. As we live in this land, each day brings one challenge after another. Do you know today the world celebrates World Water Day? Did you know that? 22nd March. But it looked like the PNM didn't know that. <laughs> Didn't know that because I heard Mr. Partap talking and you know the problems we are having with water and it's the same throughout Trinidad and Tobago. And World Water Day is a day when throughout the world people get together, authorities get together to talk about how to improve water supplies. Well, whilst I was coming, all I was hearing in the news is complaint upon complaint upon complaint of dry taps and no water. Wasa and the authorities have said nothing today on such an important day as to how they will address the problems to bring that vital commodity water to the country. And that is why, you know what we have to do? We have to vote them out. We have to vote them out. You talked about, Dennis talked about, not Dennis, Mr. Khan talked about the uh, doctor, lack of the doctor, no doctor, no ambulance and so on. Mr. Parrott, I mentioned it to you, but he forgot to say the most important thing for those who don't live here, they may not know, that under the UNC, there was a 24-7 doctor available. Right. So once again, I know Mr. Parrott will try. I know he's going to meet the regional health authority, but once again, you know what we have to do to bring that change? We have to vote them out. We have to vote them out. And so every day is another challenge in this country. All of it brought about because of the incompetence, because of the corruption, the squander mania on the part of the Manning regime. Last night, some of you would have heard the chairman of the EBC, and he was calling upon voters to update their registration because he said that there was a large number of voters 
who failed to update their registration and who have changed their addresses. Now, I am very concerned about this, very concerned about the situation described by the chairman of the BBC. And you know why? Mr. Manning does not want to call an election. Mr. Manning knows that he's going to lose the election. Yes. He knows that. And so he looks for every excuse he could get to postpone election. And so when I hear the comments coming from the BBC, I am gravely concerned that Mr. Manning will jump on this as another reason to postpone local elections once again. They've been due year upon year upon year. They come with nonsense excuses to extend the life of the local government bodies. Why? They don't want to call the local election. So, when I heard the comments, I'm sure like me, you were also worried that Manning going to use this again to postpone the elections. We are also concerned because we have expressed over and over again about the government, Mr. Manning's regime, using housing for the purpose of voter padding. You remember the UNC, how they handcuffed people, young people had them walking with handcuffs in the public, talking about voter padding and registration. And you know, up to today, not one single person, not one single person charged with that voter padding has been found guilty. Not one, you know. But they paraded young people, men, women, children, with handcuffs to say about the UNC voter padding. When that is what they do, so they know what they do, they accuse everyone else of doing it. And so when we talk about this housing that is going on, about transferring people from a strong constituency they may have into the marginal areas, that is cause for concern. And so what Mr. Kayan said, again, raises these issues of our government using the housing program, not to give you hopes for those in need, but to use it for purposes of voter pardon. And so I trust and we hope and we call on the ABC and we will be visiting them and we will be taking our concerns to them further, that they must put in place the mechanisms to investigate the legitimacy of this migration of persons that they're talking about, a migration of voters. They must put the systems to determine the existence of any deliberate manipulation of numbers of the ruling party supporters being shifted from one area to influence the outcome of the next election. The EBC is the watchdog of a people's democracy. And therefore, they are accountable for any delay in the holding of an election, which the failure on their part to do their duty could result in. And so we call upon them to make sure that they carry out their sacred duty and will be on their case to ensure that this is done. We know that Mr. Manin and his regime will do anything they can to win an election. You will remember some years ago when it is that Mr. Manin promised land to Mr. Abu Bakr. You remember that? Yes. You also remember when he went on national TV with all his ministers standing up looking real sad. Oh, hand fall up and thing. There was a picture in one of the papers yesterday or today where Mr. Manning is now on national TV making an announcement, doing what? Withdrawing his promise to give the land. But he didn't withdraw or retract from what it was that he made that promise for. And this week again, that issue came up once more when we learned that the anti-corruption um, AICB, the anti-corruption, uh, what is it? Bureau. Bureau. The AICB, anti-corruption bureau, that they were doing what? Questioning Mr. Manning about the alleged Abu Bakr land deal. You have a prime minister of this country being questioned by the police about a land deal alleged that he made with Abu Bakr. And what did Abu Bakr say? When he went to court, Abu Bakr swore an affidavit.